If you know me from Xbox forums, you know I don't like regenerating health, iron sight, or respawn the enemies. So if you came here expecting to see Call of Duty on this list, then I advise you to go down the bottom left hand side of your screen, click on that little thumbs down button. And after you've done that, look over, glance over at the top right hand bar, see that little red X? Now I want you to press that. This is a list of my top 10 first person shooter games, or at least a list of the games I played the most. When deciding which order to put the list in, I found it was impossible to compare a game like Goldeneye to Half-Life, simply because they were made at different times and on different platforms. So I've decided to make this list in chronological order, starting with the oldest then working my way up to the most recent FPS game I enjoyed. The first game on the list, which is number 10, is Duke Nukem 3D, which I'm playing now on the Xbox Live Arcade. And it allowed you to have 8 player co-ops, death matches and even let you record all your games. Something I think they stole from Halo, but Bungie had the last laugh when they took the jetpack and the hologram out of Duke Nukem. And speaking of laughs, Duke Nukem is full of one-liners. Any game that can still make you laugh after 10 years is definitely worth putting on this list. Do you remember all those great first person shooters on the PlayStation 1? No? Well, that's because there wasn't any. I think the reason for this is because the PlayStation 1's first controller didn't have an analog stick. Can you imagine how hard it would be to play a first person shooter without an analog stick or a mouse? Fortunately Nintendo 64 didn't have this problem, but my first instinct when playing Shurok was to push forward in the analog stick, only to find out that it was the C buttons that moved you and the analog was to look. This took a bit of time to get used to, but it was worth it. Using the analog to look up and down is much smoother, and I'd even go so far as to say that strafing is much easier in Turok compared to Goldeneye or Perfect Dark. If you treat the C buttons like another analog stick, then Turok is basically a template for every modern first person shooter. One analog to move and one to look. I'm not going to go into too much detail with Turok, but I plan to do a full series review when I get time. I recently watched a review for the Goldeneye remake on the Wii, and the reviewer said that it didn't matter that it wasn't like the original, because the original Goldeneye was old and outdated. Well my grandmother's old and I still love her, so the same goes for Goldeneye. It's hard for me to put my finger on exactly what made Goldeneye so great, but going back and playing it, the one thing that really stands out is the hit detection and the way the enemies react to you. For example, in this room there are three enemies. It would be impossible for me to shoot all of them at the same time, but by wounding one of the soldiers, he goes into an animation which doesn't allow him to shoot anymore, and that gives me time to focus on the last enemy. You don't really see this in games nowadays, and the likes of Call of Duty, it seems like when you shoot at enemies, they don't react to it at all, they just keep firing back at you. Even though it might not feel tactical because the choices you make are so quick, like you do them without even thinking about it. Like when you're playing Xbox and talking on the phone while eating a pizza, you just reach out for another slice of pizza without even really thinking of it. It's kind of what it's like to play Goldeneye. This was the first multiplayer game I really got into, and a lot of people watching this video might not have played it and they might not know what made it so good. Well you know when you play an online game today and someone on the other team does something really cheap to kill you, or even someone on your own team does something to annoy you and you can't really do anything about it other than file a complaint, which you know doesn't do anything and is just a waste of time. Well in Goldeneye the person you were playing was sitting right beside you. So you could just smack the controller out of their hand, tell them to go out of your house and never invite them back again. When Half-Life 1 came out it just made the top of the line console shooters look like a joke. I hadn't seen anything like it, it just looked like a new world of gaming. I shouldn't need to justify putting this game on the list, and if anyone's played it before watching this they'll know why it's here. I recently went through and completed the entire story again, and as long as you don't mind graphics, I'd say it's still as good today as it ever was. But if you didn't play it originally, I'd recommend you wait for Black Mesa to come out, which is a remake using the Source Engine, and as long as you own a game with the Source Engine on it, you should be able to get it for free. You can't compare Perfect Dark to Goldeneye any more than you can compare Goldeneye to Call of Duty. 
With Perfect Dark's expansion pack, it already has the advantage over Goldeneye. What I mean by this is, if someone held a gun to my head and said you can only play Goldeneye or Call of Duty for the rest of your life, which would it be? Obviously Call of Duty is going to have the advantage there because it has online play and I would still be able to play with my friends. And saying as how I don't want to be part of a world where Call of Duty is better than Goldeneye, I'd pick the bullet and the gun. This is another reason why this list is in chronological order. It's not fair to compare an older game to a newer one. In my neighbourhood we'd play Perfect Dark as a team against the bots, for about an hour, and then after we got bored of that we would go back and play some Goldeneye License to Kill. So although Perfect Dark was advanced in many ways, there was always something that still brought us back to playing Goldeneye. A lot of people would probably rather see Time Splitters 1 make the list instead of Time Splitters 2, but this is just down to personal preference. I played Time Splitters 2 multiplayer a lot. I really liked how you could put the bots on just like in Perfect Dark. And the multiplayer customization was taken one step further with the map editor. Not only does the game play like Goldeneye, it's filled with homages to Goldeneye and Perfect Dark. I mean look at this opening level. It starts off as a dam just like in Goldeneye. Can't be coincidence, just look at the opening cutscenes. Planting this mine in the communication disc is a lot like planting the bug in the comms radar. Or even planting the bug in the helicopter. Rarely do I not have something bad to say about a game, but I literally couldn't find a fault with Half-Life 2 if I tried. It's the kind of game that would make me embarrassed to be a game developer if I was working on another first person shooter at the time. My PC wouldn't have been able to handle the graphics at the time, so I had to wait for it to come out on the original Xbox. And even though I had completed it on it, I went out and bought Half-Life Orange Box for the Xbox 362. Which, for anyone who hasn't already bought it, really is the best value for money you'll ever spend on a game. It would even have been worth it just to replay Half-Life 2 again and then play Team Fortress. But they also had Episode 1 and Episode 2 and even Portal, which on its own is a full arcade game. Anyone disputing Half-Life 2 being on a top 10 first person shooter list should have pressed that little red X a long time ago. Time Splitters 3 had just about all you can want in the sequel. It improved on everything that 2 had and then added even more content. It even has a few frilly little additions like Half-Life 2's gravity gun which hasn't been as well implemented, but it's still fun to use. And it still has homages to Perfect Dark and Gold now, like this cleaning robot that's in Perfect Dark. And the way you have to defend your female companion is just reminding me a lot of the way you have to defend Natalia in the control level. One thing that made Time Splitters 3 stand out from other console FPS games at the time was the map editor. I was really looking forward to getting my hands on this map editor when I heard about it, and although I made some good maps, it wasn't quite as good as I had hoped. You can recreate the facility, and it does look kinda like it if you squint your eyes I guess, but I don't really like playing games I have to squint my eyes at. Unfortunately Time Splitters 3 was quickly outdated by the next game on my list, Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. Certainly multiplayer wise anyway, I can't say much for the single player of this game, and this might make it a bit hard to justify putting on the list. I was amazed by the size of these maps, and I can understand why people would find it slightly daunting the first time playing it. Although I started playing CTF well before I played Conquest, which made me learn the maps a lot better. I think this is why I don't like Call of Duty. The levels in it are far too small. Any map you can throw a grenade from one side to the other, is definitely not big enough to host a multiplayer in. Ultimately the thing that kept me playing Battlefield was nothing to do with the levels or the graphics or gameplay, but the community. This was the big difference in the original Battlefield. There was no private chat or party chat, so if you wanted to say something you had to talk to the entire room. Usually there was quite a lot of conversation going on in these matches. The closest I'll get to a conversation now is some 14 year old kid singing Black Eyed Peas down the mic in a lobby. It just kind of makes me sad that now all the Battlefield games have to have regenerating health and iron sights. And I know people are probably sick of me talking about Call of Duty, but I hold it responsible. 
Because of its success, now game developers make games exactly like Call of Duty. And in my opinion, COD Modern Warfare copied Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. So why the hell did DICE now have to copy COD games? It just doesn't make sense. Why not make your game unique and appeal to a different audience? Because you wouldn't have made as much money. I can tell you right now, if you put an end game clan option in your game, you're going to sell about a million extra copies. But the thing is Microsoft don't want a clan option anymore. They want you to buy a game, complete it within about a month and then buy the next new release. They can't make money off you if you're playing the same game over and over again. So they don't want to have any longevity to them. So now that every first person shooter has regenerating health and iron sights, the only game I could put at the top of this list is Perfect Dark Xbox Live Arcade. It still amazes me that this game was even released, especially after what happened to the GoldenEye Xbox Live Arcade game. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I've already done a full review, but I think the best thing about it is finally being able to play it online against other people. Even though there aren't very many people who play it online anymore, there are some dedicated fans in the Xbox forums who arrange matches and have even arranged a tournament. I'll finish this video off with some clips I recorded from the tournament. Feel free to post your top 10 FPS games in the comments and for more of my videos have a look at my channel.